is called Farther Down the Rabbit Hole. That is, Farther Down the Rabbit Hole just played on Manhattan Neighborhood Network. It's on from 11.30 until 12 on MNN, that's MaryNancyNancy.org, Channel 34. And then I flip over to RabbitHoleCentral.tv because what I'm trying to do is achieve the, uh, the powerful connections of empathy that I was able to make with the Manhattan audience when I had a live call-in show that was weekly. I had one hour, so for the first half hour I could have provocative material, and the second half hour I could sort of see how this was sitting with people. Initially, I got those sort of spiritual, good-hearted types that were following my show very carefully and would give me a whole lot of slack. You know, in other words, they weren't the uh, disagreeable types. Later on, what happened, I started to get the punk callers, people that were just uh, calling in for the sake of making fun of what I was doing. And then I discovered many, many months of taking this material and putting it onto Howard Stern. So in a certain way, even over and above the notoriety that I got from that happening, um, what I had was people calling in who really weren't that interested in what I was talking about, but had to pay enough attention in order to sort of set me upright so that, so that the result would be funny. So the point is, is I had the most valuable gift that anybody can give, and that is the gift of attention. And so I would say those calls, in retrospect, were probably the best thing that ever happened to me, and not because of the, the notoriety or the fame that I got later on on the Internet. Now, today or yesterday, there's been another interesting breakthrough that's, that's happened, and that is uh, I found out that I am Chapter 11 in a series called 9-11 Smooth Operators. So let me see if I can swing you over to... Oh, by the way, this is Binary Economics, a book by Robert Ashford. And every Sunday, well, at least last Sunday and next Sunday at 3 o'clock, he calls in to rabbitholecentral.tv and we stream. And I'm going to record it and then post it on YouTube. And, if, and by the way, if YouTube throws me off, then I'm going to definitely have to go full steam ahead on polygloria.com. I haven't really carved out that space properly yet, but it may get fast-tracked because a lot of sites are coming down at, at an alarming rate uh, on YouTube that have to do with the 9-11 TV fakery, showing that 9-11 was more a media job to, to galvanize our feelings to, to go to war. But in any case, uh, we are going to have an opportunity to talk with Robert Ashford about binary economics, which is capital distribution versus distribution of wealth through jobs, because jobs accounts for very little of our wealth. Therefore, we should start looking at, at what accounts for most of it, which is capital. And that will be at the seed uh, when, we, when we have solved this problem of economic distribution through capital a lot of our other problems will go away. So now what I want to do is go over here and show you 9-11 Smooth Operator, Paula Gloria. expressed myself that I said I felt like a martyr when Webster Tarpley called in. I that those who have sort of made a commitment in their life that I want to know more. Paula Gloria, Gloria created the Concordia Foundation in the mid-1990s. <laughs> and it's saying that I'm using uh, <clears throat> Nonviolent communication <clears throat> to attack people. <clears throat> now, you might very well think that. But of course, I couldn't possibly comment. Share your concerns about Ms. Sakana's properties being used as a front to attack activists. And this appear apparently comes from Denmark. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. I am a 9-11 smooth operator. So what do I have to say about that? Well, I like to sort of get on things whenever there's something very alive and clearly on this website there was something very alive. I think one of my big concerns is that they wanted to go tell people to gripe to uh, 
Dr. Bruce Steinfeld, who is the owner of Bit by Bit, and he has been good enough to host my website for so long, so I was feeling a little bit, I can't pull it up right. <clears throat> I was feeling protective about that. Now, the reason I like to make my process transparent is that I want to put it out, the things I do right and the things that I do wrong. But when I put it out and I get feedback about the things I do wrong, and if I can take that into account, if it makes sense to me and I come across more effectively as a result, I also have the hope that whoever watches this and watches this whole process isn't just watching it as entertainment, but this, this is actually a type of, of, of place where you can, can acquire knowledge, a, a school in that respect. It's a school where we're learning as a result of all of us working together and transcending limited viewpoints to get to unlimited viewpoints or more effective viewpoints. So in other words, if I'm at all effective, then I hope you use what you have learned about those aspects that are most effective. And if I'm not, then you avoid those aspects that are not effective. But that you go out and you do something to change your life and to bring your life into, into a place that uh, brings more satisfaction to you and those around you. So for me to do something like that, I felt that I should go deeply into what the issues were that he had. And what the issues were that he had, what was most alive to this person, is that Nico Haupt had said, plain huggers are pedophiles. And he said, this is a violent label, this is not nonviolent communication. And I could, you know, I understood what he meant. Now, from the point of view of art and energy, when I looked at, at Nico Haupt's work for the aliveness that he had in it, I couldn't say that I disagreed with it. Now, I didn't search it down specifically whether all those people who were blocking certain aspects of the research on 9-11 truth are pedophiles or not. I, I didn't do it. But now that this person has called it to my attention, I do want to start doing it to see if an intuition that an artist had may have something to it. So I wrote a letter, and I'll read it to you right now. Well, actually, I couldn't find that letter because it was in my sent box, and, it, and I just found out in YouTube, the last letter that you sent is buried in the, in, the, in the bottom of the heap. So it took me a long time to plow through and I had to throw out six months worth of, of sent letters to get to it. So I will do that because this person profoundly misunderstood what I said. And here's his response. Uh, and this goes to a guy named Anthony Lawson because that's who the person was saying I was a smooth operator and undermining. He goes, I can't think why you would want to share this with me, but I can relate that a schoolmaster tried to abuse someone very close to me when he was very young, and the lasting impression that gave him was anything but good. Your lofty words hide your utter self-centeredness. You might as well claim that if killing people can enhance your own body's potential, then that is acceptable. Underage children are unable to decide whether they should participate in such activities with older people, and their rights must take precedence over anything else, including the possibility that someone like you, using children to enhance their sexuality, can achieve an hour-long orgasm. Any reply will not be read. Oh, dear. This went off. Hang on. Okay, so this streams, the stream seems to have crashed, so I don't know how much of that you heard, but for the sake of what I'm going to be, um, you know, recording and posting to, response, to respond to what was sent to me, called to my attention that I'm Chapter 11 of 9-11 Smooth Operators, and being a New Age front to actually become a platform to attack activists, I want to say that I searched out what was most alive in that, and what was most alive were allegations of pedophilia. So I will say that the letter that I had sent was misunderstood profoundly. My position is that the innocence of a child is very, very precious, and that the energies that a child experiences should be gentle and not uh, such uh, overwhelming energies as as the nature of the sexual experience is, and that if they can come into sexual maturity in a balanced way, 
and the body can grow in a harmonious and balanced way, then the differences between a man and a woman can enhance each other's potential. There's some things that men can do very well, and there's some things that women can do very well. And that when it comes to achieving the full potential of a life experience, it's by coordinating this difference that we know the type of ecstasy that takes us into higher awareness. So that such things as an orgasm that lasts for one hour is is something that's possible. It's not within our social awareness because we've been so dumbed down and so distracted and rendered so incapable of holding a focus that something like that seems, seems out of the ordinary. It seems too impossible to be true. Now it seems as though Wilhelm Reich was doing some research indicating that the erotic zones of the body shouldn't be just the sexual areas, but that the ability of the body to be able to enjoy enormous pleasure should be all parts of the body. And that's why when I went to India to hunt down the allegations of sexual charges, of pedophilia charges against big gurus, or one in particular I was was called to my attention. Upon looking at it more carefully, I found out that certainly you're going to feel sorry for the child who has had this process retarded, as I just explained, so that you can grow to full ripeness and full maturity. But that even the perpetrators of this type of robbing of a child's innocence also necessitates our empathy and our understanding. In other words, we shouldn't be cutting off anybody for any reason. So there's a time that you take a position with a label and then there's other times that you have to shed the labels and give the actual information. I was listening to a show of, of my sister and Truth Sleuth and Rosalie Grable, the web fairy, calling in about the, the TV fakery that was done during 9-11 and whether the lady or the person waving from the hole is really Edna Sintron. For me, it doesn't make any difference if it's a man or a woman or, or even a human being. Any animal, anything that could be moving around a biological being has enormous implications for the official story of 9-11. However, the point of what my sister was bringing up is that Rosalie was very defensive because there were allegations and a label of liar that was going on back and forth. And it was really a beautiful encounter and I wanted to sort of savor the moment of our communication. But on the level of pure information, one or the other had to be lying. And I don't think that was even in the realm of my sister's uh, possibility of comprehension that people would go into a situation not in an honest way, that they were going into, uh, they were going in to deceive. So if somebody's going in to deceive, then you're going to cut them a lot of slack, you're going to keep the empathy going, but at a certain point you have to determine what the facts really are. And so I'm going to just end this on that note. I'm going to create a short little clip and then I will answer the, uh, the video that was pointed out to me, 9-11 Smooth Operators, Chapter 11, Paula Gloria, dot, 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 no comment. That was, that was the title. So if anybody's out there, you can call me now, but I think I'm going to be stopping the tapes.